Be stubborn about your goals, but flexible about your methods. An investor has a strategy to buy the 10 cheaper stocks of the S&P 500 and construct a portfolio out of them. They head to a database to search out the PE ratios of all the constituents in the S&P 500. They rank them from cheapest to most expensive and then divide the portfolio evenly amongst the cheapest. Armed with this simple criteria, the investor can just repeat the strategy rebalancing every year. Like constructing the same car over and over again, each step is repeated in the exact same way for the exact same reason for every car constructed. Hence, car construction went from slow coach building to a highly systematized process involving assembly lines and workers who specialize in a single task, allowing car manufacturers to mass produce cars with the help of a system. Coming back to our discretionary investor, their criteria is simple. Always buy cheap stocks as defined by their PE ratio and construct a balanced portfolio. This is repeated yearly. Like the car manufacturers having standardized components for the type of leather, metal, bolt and paint, so too does the investor have a defined level of cheapness for the stocks, rules for portfolio construction. These are strict and unchanging, and hence a disciplined approach. The cars have to also be assembled in a particular order. First the body, then the interior, then the doors, and then the exterior paint job. The investor must also check the database for new data, rank the cheaper stocks, and create the new portfolio. On the assembly line, the car is assembled as it travels down the line, moving automatically without much aid from humans. With the aid of computer code, so too can the investor's process be automated. Hence, with a disciplined approach, implemented via a methodical, automated process, this quantitative approach to trading is created. Hence, a quantitative trading system is born. So who is the architect behind these systems, these quantitative trading systems? While the job title often includes the word quantitative, they are often simply known as a quant. So where are quants and quantitative trading activities found? They are mostly found in hedge funds, in particular funds that specialize in such quantitative strategies, in multi-strategy hedge funds who employ a diverse range of strategies, in asset managers, although rarer due to their stricter investment mandates, as well as proprietary trading firms. Although formerly found in many investment banks, since 2014 this is no longer allowed due to changes in regulation. Quants typically hold advanced degrees, usually in computer science and mathematics, as well as other STEM subjects. Although historically hired from rigorous PhD programs from various top universities around the world, due to the demand for quantitative skill sets, quants are now also recruited from master's and bachelor's degree holders. Quants come in many flavors. They can be quant traders, quant researchers, quant developers, and in recent years, some firms have also created a new role known as a desk quant. This new individual typically assists the traders and researchers in their work and may also serve as a stepping stone to the other roles. Together, this little team is often overseen by a portfolio manager. This individual provides a strategic direction for the team. In general, the responsibilities of the roles are broken down as such. Traders are in charge of developing new strategies, as well as monitoring the performance and the health of the trading system and the portfolio. Researchers are in charge of rigorously testing new strategies for profitability as well as constantly researching refinements to all parts of the system. Developers develop and maintain the software platforms on which the trading systems are run as well as efficiently implement the strategies within the trading system. They may also be create bespoke software solutions to meet the needs of the traders and the researchers. Traders and researchers typically overlap in responsibilities when it comes to strategy development and researchers and developers typically overlap in terms of strategy implementation as well as platform development. Sometimes the responsibilities of all must fall on one single individual. As in many industries, this is typically only the case when the team is too small and manpower is insufficient. Some funds may also have portfolios being controlled by a single individual. 
this person researches, develops and deploys the strategies all by themselves, acting as their own portfolio manager. So what's the typical day at a fund that runs quantitative trading strategies? One may expect a crowded room, with traders screaming orders into the phones. Emotions will run as high as the stakes involved, as vast trades are orchestrated over the phone. On the contrary, the office will likely be quiet. Since all trading is handled by the trading system, the quants will be occupied with other activities. The traders will likely be occupied with keeping up to date with market events, looking out for events that will require intervention to the otherwise automated system. There will likely be screens to monitor the health and the performance of the trading system and various strategies. The researchers will be concerned with pursuing refinements to the trading system, testing new strategies, further tweaking existing ones, and their noses will be deep in books and research papers to expand their skill sets. So how well does the quantitative approach stack up to discretionary approaches? We only need to look at some of the performances of the giants of the industry. These include names such as Citadel, DE Shaw, and Two Sigma. Arguably, there is no giant bigger than Renaissance Technologies in the quant world. Also known as Rentech, this quantitative hedge fund was founded in 1988 by Mr. James Harris Simons, also known as Jim Simons. This mathematics professor turned hedge fund manager is an MIT trained mathematician and ex Cold War code breaker. The Medallion Fund is the flagship fund of this firm. And from 1988 to 2021, it had a 37% annualized return net of fees. And to give an idea of what this performance looks like, $1 invested into the S&P 500 from 1988 to 2021 would have turned into $37. If invested into Berkshire Hathaway, run by Warren Buffett, another famous investor of the opposite investment style, would have turned into $142. $1 invested into the Medallion Fund in 1988 would have turned into a whopping $44,500. This firm, as of April 2021, is reported to have about 310 employees with an assets under management of $130 billion. This firm is famous for having a preference of people not from the financial services industry, instead with half of them possessing PhDs in mathematics, physics, computer science, engineering, and statistics. To find out more about this very interesting man and incredibly interesting firm, I highly recommend the book, The Man Who Solved the Market, How Jim Simons Launched the Quant Revolution by Gregory Zuckerman. It is a great read for all aspiring quants, as well as those who are curious about the industry. Quants approach investing and trading as a science. The firms they work for range in assets under management from tiny boutique quant firms to large giants such as Citadel, DE Shaw, Two Sigma, and of course, Renaissance Technologies. When implemented correctly, quantitative strategies produce a steady return stream for their investors and they trade across a variety of assets. However, the models employed by these quants are also known to stop working suddenly due to inadequate research and backtesting, but also changes in market regime. If you are an aspiring quant looking for a job or internship, click the video on the left to find out about the top quant funds based in London, and also download my free Excel spreadsheet of 190 firms to give you a head start in your applications. If you are interested in how quant interviews are like, Click the video on the right to hear about my experience applying to quant roles in 2022 and 2023. And finally, if you are just a student struggling to land your first internship and experience, click the video in the middle to hear about some unconventional ways to boosting your CV to get that quant role. And finally, keep a lookout for my next video where I share more about why quantitative trading matters in the financial markets.